let's try this problem. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of the function 5x divided by x squared plus 2x? Now we can't use direct substitution here because if we plug in 0, we're going to have 0 divided by 0 which is indeterminate so we're not going to do that. Instead, we can evaluate this limit analytically by factoring. There's nothing to factor on the top that is on the numerator of the fraction, so we're not going to change it. But in the denominator, we can take out the GCF, the greatest common factor. So if we take out an x, x squared divided by x is x, and 2x divided by x is positive 2. Now notice that we can cancel an x variable. And so we'll be left with the limit as x approaches 0 of 5 divided by x plus 2. Now we can use direct substitution. Once you replace x with 0, there's no need to rewrite this limit expression. Now some teachers are picky about this, so you have to rewrite it until you replace x with this number. So the final answer is 5 divided by 2. That's the limit of this expression. Now what about this one? What is the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 3x minus 10 divided by x minus 2? So we can't plug in a 2. If we do, we're going to get a 0 in the denominator. And it's going to be undefined. So we got to factor. How can we factor this trinomial? To do so, find two numbers that multiply to 10 but add to 3. Two numbers that multiply to 10 are 5 and 2. Now we can make it negative 5 and positive 2 or positive 5 and negative 2. Now we want to make it positive 5 and negative 2 because those two numbers add up to positive 3. So therefore, x squared plus 3x minus 10 can be factored as x plus 5 times x minus 2. And we need to rewrite the limit expression. So notice that we can cancel the factor x minus 2. And so we're left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 5. So now we can use direct substitution. We're not going to get a 0 in the denominator anymore. So it's going to be 2 plus 5, which is 7. So that's the limit. Here's another problem that you could try. What is the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3? So what do you think? What is the answer to this problem? Well, we need to factor x squared minus 9. And we can use the difference of perfect squares formula. So for example, if you have a squared minus b squared, it's going to be a plus b times a minus b. So for example, let's say if we have x squared minus 25. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. And one is going to be positive and the other is going to be negative. That's how you can factor it. So for the example that we have, the square root of x squared, as we said before, is x. And the square root of 9 is 3. And so it's going to be x plus 3 and x minus 3. So we can cancel with the 3 on the bottom. And now we're left over with the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3. And now let's use direct substitution. So it's going to be 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. And so that's how we can evaluate this particular limit. What is the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 8 divided by x minus 2? What would you do in that case? So what we need to do is factor the difference of perfect cubes. And the formula that we need to use is this one, a cubed minus b cubed 
is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, a cubed is x cubed. b to the third is 8. So a is the cube root of x cubed, which is x, and the b is the cube root of 8, which is 2. a squared, that's x times x, which is x squared. a b, that's x times 2, or 2x. Two and b squared is 2 squared, which is 4. So therefore, we have the expression, the limit, as x approaches 2, x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 divided by x minus 2. All right, let's get rid of this stuff on the bottom. And now we can cancel the x minus 2 factor. So we have the limit as x approaches 2 of this remaining expression. And now let's use direct substitution. So this is equal to 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 plus 4 plus 4 3 times is the same as 4 times 3, which is 12. And so that's the limit as x approaches 2 of this expression. So you need to be familiar with the different factoring techniques that you've learned in a typical algebra course. Now, let's try this one. What is the limit as x approaches 4 of 4 minus x divided by x squared minus 16? So take a minute and pause the video. See if you can get this one right. So what do you think we need to do here? So looking at x squared minus 16, we can see that we have a difference of perfect squares situation. So to factor it, it's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 4. But 4 minus x and x minus 4, they don't really cancel at the present moment. However, what we can do is factor out a negative 1. If we take out a negative 1 in the front and then reverse the order of 4 minus x, notice that if you take a negative from negative x, you're going to get positive x. If you take a negative from positive 4, it changes to negative 4. So by factoring out a negative 1, we now can cancel x minus 4. And so what we have left over is the limit as x approaches 4 of negative 1 divided by x plus 4. And so this is going to be negative 1 over 4 plus 4, and 4 plus 4 is 8. So the answer is negative 1 divided by 8. Now what is the limit as x approaches 4 of the expression x squared minus x minus 12 divided by x squared plus x minus 20. So we just need to factor completely. Let's go ahead and factor this expression. So what two numbers multiply to negative 12 but add to the middle coefficient negative 1? So we know 4 times 3 is 12. But we need to make the 4 negative, because negative 4 plus positive 3 is negative 1. So this is going to be x minus 4 times x plus 3. Now what two numbers multiply to negative 20, but add to 1? Well, we know 5 times 4 is 20. But we need to make it positive 5 and negative 4, because that's going to add up to 1. So it's x plus 5 times x minus 4. So we can cancel x minus 4. And so we're left with the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 3 divided by x plus 5. So if we plug in 4, it's going to be 4 plus 3 over 4 plus 5. Now 4 plus 3, we know it's 7. 4 plus 5 is 9. And so that's the answer, 7 divided by 9. What is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the expression? 2x squared minus x minus 3 over x plus 1. So what can we do here? What would you do? So first, we can't plug in negative 1 because on the bottom, it's going to give us 0, and so that's uh, undefined. But we need to factor this trinomial. But notice that the leading coefficient is not 1. So the way in which we refactor it is going to be different. 
So first, let's multiply 2 times negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. What two numbers multiply to negative 6 but add to the middle coefficient of negative 1? This is going to be negative 3 and 2. So to factor it, we're going to replace the middle term, negative x, with positive 2x minus 3x. Next, let's factor by grouping. In the first two terms, take out the GCF, which is 2x. And so you'd be left with x plus 1. In the last two terms, take out the greatest common factor, which is negative 3. And so you're going to get x plus 1. Next, factor out x plus 1, so we're going to write it once. If we take out x plus 1 from the first term, we'll be left with 2x. If we take it out from the second term, we're going to have negative 3 left over. So therefore, we could say this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1, x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 1. So now we can cancel x plus 1. And so we're left with the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2x minus 3. So now let's use direct substitution. So this is going to be 2 times negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 2 minus 3, and that's equal to negative 5. So that's the final answer.